Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 92, halfway through December, which is basically the end of the year. This is our last meeting of 2015. I hope you guys are all excited to wrap up this year in style. We have some fun stuff to talk about today, and we're starting our new process, which we'll all talk on the agenda. As always, these meetings are recorded for those people that are unable to be with us here right now, so let's go ahead and get into it. The agenda, we'll do triage. Uh, in our way that we do triage. And then I want to give an update on the issue tracker migration, which we discussed a little bit, I think, after the meeting um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we're doing a new thing. We're going to try to do a pull request review. Or we'll see how well my mouse cursor works or does not work, which could make this interesting. Um, so I went out and picked a bug that, or a pull request that seemed like a good place to start. Um, so we'll go do that one. And then, as always, we'll do questions and comments and things like that at the end. And hopefully this all still fits in roughly uh, a half hour, but you know we'll see, and then we'll adjust as appropriate. So moving on, triage. You ready, Bob? I'm ready. All right. So I think we have stuff. This is the old bug that kept coming back, and Jacob said he can confirm that things do work, so he wants to talk about this in 3.11. And this is update per user incorrectly. Um, right. So can we do this in a backwards compatible way, Jacob, I think is the fundamental question. Will this break anything in Wix 3? It will break things in Wix 3, huh? Or sorry, I asked two questions. Oh, as a backwards compatible. It is backwards compatible. I can't do that, can I? Yeah. All right, Rob. Non-breaking. Cool. So we could take this in 3.11. Um, you want it 3.11, Bob? Uh, it seems fairly isolated. Yeah. And yeah. it is a 3.10. the update. And it is a 3.10 thing that's not working in 3.11. Yeah. Or sorry, it's a newish thing that isn't working quite right. Okay. Right. All right. Moving on. Fails to harvest outputs if no Win32 configuration exists. I could believe Heat not liking that. Um, 3x? Sure. So I want to go dig into it. Insecure handling of hidden variable command line parameters. Yes. However, past sensor information is a valid use case would be stored and passed to the custom bootstrapper as secure strings. Um, so the interesting thing is that you can ask a process for its command line args. In fact, you can go into um, Task Manager and sh have it show your command line args, and all the variables are going to show up right there. So I'm not terribly excited about doing the work to hide the command line args that much more. Right, it would just be hiding it from itself. Well, yeah, and you're not hiding it from anybody that matters. Right. Right, and and another complication is, and we discussed this on an unrelated topic, except it's mildly related to the whole idea of command line arguments. BAs do not enforce a syntax for for properties. That's correct. So you know, name equals value is is a convention, and we don't enforce it. But to do what this issue is requesting, we would have to enforce that. Right. So, yeah. I, no, I don't think we're doing this. The re, the return on this is near zero. Sean, you did the secure string stuff before. Any concerns? Yeah, can't be secure. Okay. All right. Building with an existing cab cache can error if the cabs are locked. Hmm, I would believe that. Seems like something that could be improved. 4, 4x. Put it in 4x until someone wants to fix it. Yeah, I think that's fine. We've talked about um, uh, retries. Um, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm fine if we... I would like to, I would like to get to a point where where all I.O. is retried. Exactly. I, so, yeah. Right now, we special case it. and uh, Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to do generally, but 
But yeah, I'm with you. Firewall extension couldn't enable port exception on Windows if the exception exists and is disabled. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, I don't know that. Uh, I don't know what the code, how the code handles that. So I vaguely recall from writing the code many, many, many years ago that it, it's primarily to add exceptions, and there's yeah. some support in there for updating them, but I don't know that it would magically enable it. That might need to be an explicit so uh, an explicit thing we do. This could be done in a backwards compatible way, presumably. It's unlikely that you want this to be failure in like this case. Right, right. Yeah, I so, agree. So we could toss in 3x. Burn should have an option to cache packages that aren't needed for install but will need to repair. This is basically fix the cache. Populate yeah, cache. Well, yeah, in so the case that Burn would have done itself. Yeah. I ran I ran into this recently and, and yep. it, it's it's perfectly legitimate. You know, you're not gonna install something because it's already there, but if you do a repair, we're gonna try to repair it and then you need source. So, and then you need it. Yep. Um I, I agree it, it shouldn't be the default. Um so I don't know if this is like a fourth Boolean state for cache. Um, yeah, if you come up with a good name. Yeah, I know. I didn't, which is why I didn't suggest it, because I normally do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's basically cache for repair. Oh, for repair. There we go. Yeah, I try to avoid double words if possible. So it's uh, it'd be per package, Jacob. I... I I, I don't want this to be a uh, a global thing. Cash equals always works really well, but um, it, it doesn't cover the case where we're never going to install something. You like know, an so X60, you have, X32 on X64 yeah, yeah. or something, X86 on right. X64, yeah. Yeah, or, you know, oh, I need to install MSI 4.5, and only on XP, so <laughs> there's no reason to cache those things. Yeah, right. Or download, yeah, and in particular, no point to download them. Right. Uh, that's that's fair. That's fair. But if they were already present, you'd like to have them in the cache in the case that they're not. So it's basically, yeah, it's like, you know, cache, and you almost want to say if absent. <laughs> no, but you want to say if present. Yeah, if I don't present. have a good name for this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, please. <laughs> Uh, Ooh, I'm not going to come yeah. up with a name. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is fine. It's in 3X. It could be done. I'm not excited about tons and tons and tons of things, but it's probably much easier for the engine to figure this out than a BA to figure it out. Uh, yeah, so a, a BA can do it. The problem you run into is uh, the BA, uh, the engine knows all of the, the reasons that it might choose to, to not install a package. Yeah. And I don't want all of that knowledge to have to go into the BA. Yeah, that's that's where it's all over. All right, yeah, I can see it in three X. Someone wants to do that. Could be done. Cool. So I want you all to look at this right here. Not necessarily the number that there are six, but just in general things that you have looked at before. Um, oh, there goes my mouse cursor. It's gonna make life fun. Uh, my open. There we go. Oh, I'm not logged in. I thought I was logged in. Um, all this stuff, that login prompt, this age-old search syntax. It's very, very cool. I know you've come to love it. Today's our last day using it. Uh, before the next uh, meeting, which will be next year because of holidays and such like that, uh, we'll be on to GitHub. Um, I've already started development most of the way through. Um, if you're watching closely, you can see these test repos being created, destroyed, and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's one out there right now, I think, that hasn't destroyed yet. Anyway, um, all of the issues will be migrated. Hopefully, it'll be a very good migration. Much of the data will be preserved, as much can be. It'll be nice and clean, and we'll all be on GitHub with all the good things to have in GitHub. Um, it will probably be in the a repo called Issues, um, and when it's done, mail will go out to Wix devs. And like I said, it'll be completed before next, the new year. It might even be completed before Christmas. It kind of depends on how well things go. So this is going to be one uh, repo 
that covers all the different versions of Wix. That's right, because we don't want to, because that's the cleanest way to tell users how to file a bug against Wix and not have to deal with the fact that we split things across repos. Um, that, that there's a Wix 3 and a Wix 4, and then they put a bug in Wix 3, but we're not going to do it there, so we have to move to Wix 4. It's a lot more work to do that than it is to just have one repo and then refer into that repo whenever you want. There are ways of referring to things cross-repo and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so uh, one issue tracker, essentially, using GitHub <laughs> is what we're going to have. Um, this has been done by a number of other projects um, to varying levels of success and things like that. So I think that's what we're going to do there. Easy thing. And then also there will, should be redirects from the current issues to the new issues. So essentially if you have links to any existing issues, they will all continue to work without any issue. The looks like the data we will lose is some of the information about who opened um, what bugs may be to some degree. But a lot of that's still showing up. So we'll see. It looks pretty good so far. Um, and it'll be done before the end of the year. Um, we will disable the issue tracker for a little bit, migrate all the data, bring up the new issue tracker, everything will be super duper awesome. And now's not a bad time to do that kind of thing since a lot of people are doing less stuff around the holidays. Hopefully. We'll see. At least that's the idea. Cool? Cool. All right. So, since we're moving our way towards the great uh, GitHub monoculture, mono culture, I thought today would also be a great thing. That I, I don't know when this suggestion came up. A couple of weeks ago. It's come up a few times. I think we're finally going to do it. We're going to do a pull request review. So we're going to go back to the web, um, and we're going to pull an I pull. I pick a pull request. I pull a pull request out of a hat. I pull a pull request out of the pull request bucket. Um, I um, grab one that we should talk about. Uh, I picked one that hopefully isn't too controversial and isn't too complicated this week, and then we'll pick ones that get harder over time or not, or whatever. Um, that is not to say that we will only do pull request reviews here. It's just that we will do some of them. Uh, the idea of people saying, hey, yeah, you know, you can learn a lot by watching these. So that's what we're going to do. Hey, look, my mouse cursor came back too. How oh, very exciting. So I pulled this one out of a hat because, like I said, it was fairly new. Um, it was relatively self-contained, and I thought it'd be interesting to start with. Um, plus, if we say anything bad, I know that Bob cannot take it. Oh, just wait. <laughs> All right, so uh, there's a couple different ways that I start with these. Sometimes I start with looking at the commits, if there are many of them. In this case, there's only one. So then I just go in the files change. A lot of times I just drop in the files change um, and go, ah, I don't know, let's just see, get a feel for what this looks like. So we drop in here, yay, look at history entry, that means I don't have to think about that now. We're doing something to theme util, we're doing something to theme viewer, and a couple header file changes, theme viewer, top to bottom. All right, so this is obviously stuff related to theme viewer and localized strings, which is what this says, so that's good. It's not like it's something that it wasn't advertising to be doesn't happen very often. Um, I don't really have a way of working through these. I'm just kind of walking through and looking at the code, making sure it lines up with what you might expect the world. So if there's control text, do that. Otherwise, if there's a name, or if there's no control text and there's a name, go attempt to load it out of the loc strings by name, I guess. OK. Yeah. Um, and then clean up. Alec. Alec. So we set the text to the result of us loading this loc string. Cool. Um, does loc get string need to be freed? Nope. All right because it's just referring to data. It's already in its own space table. That's awesome. I love that. All right, cool. So then we come down to theme viewer, which is much, much fuzzier in my brain. Um, but I don't expect to do much. So hey, you can pass a Wixel path to theme viewer, which makes a lot of sense, because otherwise, how would it know? And you couldn't do that before, which is kind of sad. Hey, look, white space cleanup. Um, 
keep going. If there is a whistle path, load it. Right, yay, cool. So that was all command line kind of holding or processing. Or here's the command line processing itself. We can now load things. All right, cool. So process command line to get it and then pass it. No big surprises there. Process the command line. If we get the extension, if it's a Wixel file, then we will store that in a Wixel file. Otherwise, we're going to assume it's the theme file. OK, so that means there's no ordering between the two of them. That's kind of nice. does mean that the Wixel file needs to be a Wixel, but that's pretty much always the same. So that shouldn't be too much of a big problem either. Um, white space. And I don't know which one's more consistent, but we'll let it go. I guess this item isn't needed and these HRs are redundant. Wow, that was easy. So where did the work happen? I guess it all happened in the start. Load from file theme localized. Yes. So the thing that this might not be able to do is reloads. So that's fair, yes. A uh, yes. change in the Wixel file will not automatically get reflected. Yes, so that is the comment that goes here. I don't know where, somewhere around here. Um, on the Wixel. Wow, if I could spell today. Maybe something for the future. Right, so basically here I'm trying to say, I have found this, which the little voice in my head says I was right, which is always kind of nice. I like it when that, it's a lot deeper, I think, than my voice is, but you guys would be able to tell me that for sure. Um, and then I put this comment here saying, yeah, something for the future, which I think is something that Sean is getting used to me saying as a, we're probably okay for now, but something to think about in the future. All right, leave a comment, please. It always does this to me. Try again. It works a second time. I don't know why GitHub chooses to do that, but they say Auto try culture. again. Love it. Yeah, I'm just saying. I think it's an IE thing. Yada, yada, yada. And then I kind of wander around a little bit more, just seeing if my eyes catch anything else that I'm like, wait, 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 wait. That's not right. Um... And I think I'm not going to find anything else. This is a little extraneous, but you know what? I don't disagree, so it's kind of nice to see it disappearing. And it's small, so it doesn't detract from the rest of the world. All right, cool. So that well, I'll bring up one thing mm -hmm. that I didn't. We didn't really dis discuss, like you know, design or you know, higher level things, and that's often a you know biggish part of, of reviews. Yes, this is fairly straightforward. Uh, yeah, the code is the code is what it is. You know, yeah. it's not not a real big change. Uh, but the behavior change is that I'm now automatically loading look strings. So this is new behavior, which is why this is in the Wix4 depot. I see. Yes, that's true based off their ID. But it's not. But it only happens if you don't have text. Correct. And you probably didn't get very far in the past doing that. Well, this, yeah, the only way it would work is if you were programmatically setting the text, which mm -hmm. you can still do, which of course. you certainly can do, and if you don't have a loc ID. So the breaking change here is if you somehow had an ID, uh, a loc ID that matched the control name, <laughs> and suddenly you would get a string going, what the heck just happened? I didn't give it a right. string. So that's yep. the breaking change, but yeah. Yeah, I guess to me this made so much sense I didn't even think about it, but you're right. Me too, but I thought I would bring it up. Yep, yep, yep. So at this point, I don't think I'm going to commit merges um, on the call, because I'm going to leave enough time for me to go back and double review it. Um, but we'll declare that good. So anyway, there's a pull request. What you just saw is a very typical process of me kind of walking through the code with my my little voice in my head happy, provide a nice backup on it. Um, so this UI, with all the colors and the layouts and all this kind of stuff, get used to it. We're going to see a lot more of this in the future. And there we go. Pull requests. First one.
questions, comments. So it looks like people are saying to use Chrome, or I'm sure Bob is using Firefox. Actually, I'm not sure you're using Firefox, um, but probably using Firefox or in GitHub. In, for GitHub, I use Firefox. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to have to figure out what to do there, because when I share Chrome in uh, uh, Skype, like we do here, it tries to share all processes of it, not just the one that I select. Where IE does the right thing, it only shows the one that I, the one window that I've selected, and that will create very weird things if I somehow have Chrome running somewhere that I didn't know, and you don't see this black window way off on one of my third monitors or something. So I'll have to think about what I do. I may have to switch off of IE for working in it. Maybe I'll now install Firefox and be like Bob, and I have, I have a browser for every individual website I want to go to. Um, Just about. <laughs> well, it's also the way you deal with with Microsoft accounts and and. Google IDs and all of that, too. Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah, I hear you. Blah. All right. So, anything else? Things people want to talk about? Stuff going on? Stuff we should be aware of? Uh, Something no we have meeting. to deal with before the end of the year. Exactly, before the end of the year. No meeting for the next two weeks. So, we'll be back uh, the 8th? Yeah. Yes, the 8th which will give us enough time to talk about the release that happens a few days after that. But that'll be for next year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. So two weeks off. When you come back, we will have a slightly different process, but it'll be mostly the same thing. A Wix 3.11 build before 3.10.2. Uh, we probably could do that if we want to do all the work to make it happen. I've mostly been lazy knowing that it's easier to do 3.10.2 from where we're at if we don't take any changes. Um, well, branches, we haven't taken any changes. Did the branches, and and I don't want to pull anything or merge any pull requests until you do the version changes, the version pull requests that I have out there. Right, and so, I don't feel like yeah. doing that until I. I guess I was kind of going. Eh, I don't really want to do that until I have three ten two out of the way, just because it makes life a little easier. Um, just keep doing it in a straight line. Um, Although, let me ask that a different way. Is there a great desire to have a 3.11 build in the next two weeks? Three there weeks? are a lot of pull three requests weeks. that have backed up. So, would you like to get through them over Christmas? That's what I was just thinking about. Speaking of two weeks off, I, you know, I could use some of that time to do 3.11 pull requests. All right, then we'll go get 3.10.2 in a separate place, and we'll get 3.11 going, and we can do that work. It's not a huge amount of extra work if people actually think it's useful. Plus, it'll get us all prepped for 3.10.2. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably worth it. And we have to do the work to get that ready anyway. Yeah, Master Branch is all, you know, it's all set up, so you have you have uh, all of 3.10.1 merged over already, so as long as we can build from that branch, then yep. we're good on 3.10.2. Yep. All right. So, all right, Bob and I will probably go off and do some, you know, extra work in Wix to do that, intermingle it with the GitHub migration and all that kind of stuff. <sighs> and get some of this junk behind us. So I don't know if, if you, you probably can't tell, but I've been doing a lot of work to try to clear my backlog of stuff that needs to be managed and done and otherwise has been hanging around for a long time. Backlog. Trying to clear out my backlog so I can look forward and just have a clear <laughs> a clearer view of what's going on versus all this extra stuff constantly being drug about. So uh, anything uh, else? So help us batten down the hatches for Wix 4.0. Exactly, because we need to get a, you know, all lined up and rolling at Wix 4.0. It's kind of the idea. So, anything else? Things people want to talk about? No, nope, no, nope, going. All right. Cool. Start a little late, ending a little early. We're definitely under 30 minutes with a pull request. So. I think we'll declare that an awesome time to be done. Um, I wish all of you a happy holidays, doing what you're doing, working or taking holidays off or whatever you're doing. Um, like I said, I'm trying to get through my backlog, so hopefully you'll see some stuff happening around the world that will make 
everything or around the Wix world that will make everything cleaner and prettier and shinier in the new the new year and we'll then roll forward from there. So for the next two weeks, you guys enjoy eggnog or whatever it is that you enjoy over your holiday break and uh we'll talk to you in two. Bye. Bye.